Hi. Well, I'm going to tell you a story about magic and about the magic of stories, or I should say the stupid magic of stories, because I know stupid magic. I collect spectacularly misguided experiences like stamps. <laughs> like take when I was in my early 20s, um, the stupidest of all the ages. I was climbing my first mountain ever, like the tallest peak in the Sawtooth. And as we neared the top, this storm cover came in and our hair started rising up to meet the atmosphere. And you could like feel this electric thickness in the air, like the palpable weight of it. And instead of being like rightly terrified of being struck by lightning, I just ran my hand through the air instead and these sparks went off in between each finger and I just felt like I was magic. And then everything blew over anyway. So I ended up just being awestruck instead. Um, <laughs> and I've really never felt anything like that until Story Story Night. It's this live storytelling program I co-created six years ago where people from our community get together and they tell true stories on a theme, live and without notes. Um, our first show ever, Busted, we thought we would have like 25 people. We thought it would be kind of a small thing. And then I looked outside the window before doors opened and you could see these, um, just there was a line going down the stairs and around the corner and we ended up using every single chair in that venue, like it was packed side to side. And then the story started and they were raw and electric and amazing. And I felt that again, that like weight in the air, the energy in it, like I didn't know before that day that you could feel people's emotions. Like even when it's totally pitch black and people are silently holding their breath, you can just feel it, what they're thinking. And um, it feels like sparks of illumination, it's amazing. But I have to admit, I'm not gonna lie, the first two years of that program, we were pretty stupid. <laughs> like we would know that a story could be electric but sometimes they would just fall flat and we had no idea what to tell people because that stock advice, like you need a beginning, middle, and end, doesn't quite cut it when you're alone on stage with a mic and your thoughts and like a crowd of people just waiting for magic to happen. It's terrifying. <laughs> so one day I was just sketching it out and thinking about what a story really needs, you know? It needs a turning point moment um, when everything kind of was surprising and changed for you, you need, uh, you need build-up scenes that kind of just lead right to it. And then you need a takeaway that brings it all back. And then I had this realization, I call it an Einstein light bulb moment, but a pretty basic non-genius one, you know, that a story is not a static triangle of a beginning, middle, and end. A story is a wave. A story is a force of nature that just sucks you in. So it rises up in a series of build-up scenes that only serve to elevate the tension. And you just kind of get swept away in the emotion and drama and action of it all. And all of that build-up is rushing head-on towards this one turning point moment when the action crests and the greater meaning of the story just kind of crashes over you in one great splash and then it's calm again. And eventually you make it back on shore, and there you are just sipping a mojito, like watching the waves, man. <laughs> That's a story. <laughs> so really a story, you ride a story like a wave, and the audience rides it with you, and it's a total thrill ride. And for Story Story Night, that has helped our program so much since that time, because now we can just be like, oh, just pick out a surprising moment, and then launch, build up, turning point, take away, land. Super easy, anybody can do it. <laughs> oh, so, but even armed with this story wave and better and better shows and sold out shows and ever widening venues, we, four years into the program, we were drowning, to be honest. Like, I don't know if you've ever started accidentally, like, an amazingly successful artistic phenomenon, but it's super not easy to keep up with. <laughs> so 
I felt like we were always chasing behind this wildly successful program when beneath our skirts, you know, we had no real legs. Like we didn't have a nonprofit status or a paid staff or like good Excel spreadsheet skills. So <laughs> the numbers just stopped adding up and we were all totally exhausted and we were just about to shut it down. And then we got, um, we got a spam email. I got a spam email. It was from, like, I think the prince of Kazakhstan or something, and he's like, you won $30,000. And I, I totally ignored it, obviously. Um, until a full, solid month later, a colleague of mine, a friend in the arts, he, he said, isn't it amazing that grant we got? And I was like, oh, okay. That spam was real, you guys. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, so... It, they didn't just give us actually just that straight up cash. They gave us what they called value added support, which was basically meant they were flying us and all these groundbreaking projects from around the country to an island in Florida for a week for free. Like, okay. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so we ended up landing in this island, Captiva Island in Florida, where Robert Rauschenberg, he's an artist, he made his art in these stark white studios that were beautifully lit surrounded by wild nature. And I learned that Rauschenberg, or Bob as I call him, because he's my spirit uncle now, um, <laughs> he would make art using these found objects that he would find like on the street. And it would be brilliant and beautiful. And I feel like that's what stories are made of too. They're these things that we picked up throughout our lives because they were shiny or because they were strange or because they were beautiful, or because they just happened to be there, you know, just to wash up at our shore. And we put this on this epic collage of who we are, so we can later just stand back and stare at it all, like still captivated. And late at night at this event, we would, uh, we would all go to the beach and drink hard alcohol and champagne, which is really stupid, so giving you a tip, don't do that. Um, <laughs> and I would just sit with all these amazing creators from across the country and hear their stories. And hearing about how they also put their hearts and guts and soul on the line every day for the projects they believed in like made me feel less alone. And we happened to be there when this sweep of bioluminescent plankton was coming in. And we went swimming in the dark in the Gulf of Mexico. And when you ran your hands through the water, a thousand little sparks would just fly off your fingers. It's amazing. And above us, the Leonid meteors crashed through the atmosphere. And we just floated there, just captivated by the magic of nature and by the nature of magic. And it was the perfect story. Thank you guys so much.